Kita tutorial next week kan Eh Next week, oh boleh boleh dah start dah kalau ni Tapi tengok lah, tengok uh, banyak mana yang kita cover uh, You can utilize the chat eh, if you want to chat Chat means uh, you want to ask question ke apa ke You can stop me at any time Pukul 4, kita ada 70 lebih eh. The last das, uh, the last class for the day, yeah. Yes, sir. I pun ada the uh, Mak Saleh ni dia datang Malaysia tau So naik bas ke uh, 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 Old lady Roughly about 60 years old And she was alone I stop her and ask question uh, Yelah kita curious kan Dia tua naik bas ke You know worry about her safety and things like that That was I think 15 years back uh, But uh, I was wondering, I said, uh, macam mana, how, how do you manage to like uh, night bicycle, uh, you know, from all the way from Europe until here. Uh, they kata, it's normal, cuma, they kata Malaysia ni panas. I said, uh, so what, what can you compare with your Western world with regards to uh, how we as Malaysian or Eastern uh, people behave? So kata, I think uh, your attitude towards life is sl slightly different from what we we are seeing uh, from the West. I said, what was the reason? Uh, do you think why we are in, in that nature? So they kata, I think because of the weather, you know, weather big, plays a big role because kalau panas, you be you you be like, kata tak nak buat apa apa, you just want don't want to do anything become passive than active. Uh, I fikir balik, I, get it, I think I have to agree with her because we Easterners, uh, panas eh? because uh, we become, because of panas, we become more passive rather than active. Uh, we just want to do anything. So they are banyak active eh? uh, they, because the climate, eh? jalan macam mana pun tak perlu, you know and they have that uh, you know the ambience is is good for them to do uh, uh, exercise and things like that in my work agree when she was there the uh, australia uh, when she studied her master there they they kata jalan is normal i mean for everyone to jalan but kita ni kalau nak jalan mati bakak badan <laughs> Okay, uh, shall we start? Uh, part 3 minit, 61 orang I think good enough for us to start. I don't want to waste uh, any of your data. Uh, I'm sorry, I try to find the videos uh, with respect to the to the initial stage uh, of the class. Uh, looking at the content and things like that. Uh, I couldn't find it. I don't know where it went to. But uh, I think we go through uh, online uh, this time, hopefully. Uh, next time, uh, I can find the, the videos uh, and, and I'll put it up, uh, the recording, for you to be able to like the, not, not have this session where you are exposing your data. Okay, uh, uh, welcome everyone to the class uh, for juris, the first uh, class of juris. Eh? And uh, as I already mentioned about juris, uh, first we need to look at the background of the study. Why do we need to learn jurisprudence? Uh, <clears throat> before we understand why, let's look at the what. Eh? So it's good for us to ask questions. Now, <coughs> that is why I, 
wanting you to stop me at any time. Either you want to chat, uh, <coughs> you do your asking through the chat. If you feel uncomfortable uh, talking, uh, you can always uh, stop me, sir, excuse me, I want to ask this question and things like that. Anything, anytime. Yeah, anything, anytime uh, related to the topic ke, tak related ke, uh, hentam saja, ya. Yeah? Uh, the fact that uh, this paper is supposed to let you, as I mentioned, let you free your mind in order for you to question anything. So, if you uh, don't feel intimidated, uh, don't worry about me, uh, you know, getting annoyed uh, for, uh, with your question. Uh, just ask, yeah? Okay. So uh, basically, uh, law is about us to polish our mind to be uh, good thinkers, yeah, good uh, analytical thinkers that we are able to uh, see things clearly and not let anyone, uh, what they call it, uh, and uh, cloud our mind, yeah. So we are supposed to have that clarity of mind. So why we need that clarity of mind for us to be able to make decision correctly? So uh, in order to do that, uh, we have to ask questions. In order for us to uh, know the truth, we have to start asking questions. And uh, the best is the four wife, one husband, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, words. Eh? Uh, so the questions, eh? what, when, where, who, and how, you know. Uh, this is the uh, basic of uh, getting knowledge yeah, in terms of we have to ask yeah, questions of that nature. Uh, what is jurisprudence? So if uh, by definition, uh, jurisprudence is juris, i.e. Uh, of law or uh, of right. And then uh, prudence is the ability to convince uh, oneself by the use of reasons. So you are able to use your reasoning towards understanding law okay so it is by definition of uh, dictionary the theory of uh, philosophy of law what is philosophy then philosophy is love of thinking so philosophy eh? if you look it up the definition uh, philosophy is love of thinking thinking about, what? Thinking about law and uh, in order for you to think about law you have to come up with theory right normally yeah it's normally people will talk about theory in order for them to uh, try to portray uh, their opinions about uh, the law okay so therefore uh, uh, jurisprudence is the legal philosopher's opinion of law and what uh, what is really is and uh, how it should be so basically there, there is two questions here uh, it is about what it is and uh, what it should be, or we call it ought, yeah? is and ought. So you look it up uh, in the internet, you will see the uh, various argument or articles yeah? or books talking about is and ought argument. Yeah? And they, uh, <clears throat> we, we, there are many philosophers that is uh, talking about this and this actually the question starts from way way thousands and thousands of years uh, what you need to do uh, it is what it is and it ought to be you know something uh, something that is based on reality something that is based on uh, element of uh, what people think that you need to do Okay, so uh, uh, therefore the legal philosopher's opinion of the law eh? and the legal philosophy of how law works and why law is important. Because if we have studied so far, looking at all the studies that you have made from Assessi until now, you have learned how the law works. Yeah, And uh, it is not enough for us to understand how uh, the law that we have learned so far works. We need to know why those laws are important. Where does it come from? Uh, why is it prevailing uh, element for us to follow that type of law in order for us to apply to the problems or to practices later on? Yeah? And if you look at this particular person smoking, you surely have uh, formulated a uh, what they call it, an opinion. So 
as I already mentioned, this particular situation is, uh, if every one of you looking at this picture, you definitely will formulate a, an opinion. Some would say, I don't know, uh, can you chat and uh, put it up as, uh, what do you think right now, looking at her smoking? Anyone? What do you think? Your personal opinion, not the legal opinion. You can utilize the chat in the uh, uh, in the you know, the chat box. No one. Smoking is bad. Thing. It's a bad thing. I mean, it's not good for your health. <laughs> she doesn't care for her health, right? Nagi, wow, uh, that. From this uh, chatting response, you can see that uh, if if we take that uh, is law enforced in Malaysia anymore. Uh, smoking law is not enforced, okay? Is it, Ms. Bula? Sir, for me, yeah. the girls are just being natural and then it's not wrong for her because she uh -huh. has the right to smoke. Because yeah, she has the right to smoke. Individually, I mean, she is in her room, she can do whatever she wants, right? Yeah. Um, in her private space, if she is not able to uh, cause any harm to other people, which harming itself is, is uh, debatable, right? Smoking, yeah. She looks satisfied. Huh? Okay, she looks satisfied. Uh, freedom, this is what uh, the law entails us to do, whatever we want. As long as we don't commit any crime, uh, even crime itself is being defined as what the law says. Yeah? If you were to take drugs here in Malaysia, it is wrong. But if you were to take drugs in your own room, nobody knows and nobody cares, right? So how come the law becomes so busy body with what you do in your private domain? Uh, if you look at those people in the Western world, they can do whatever they want, especially when you're talking about drugs. They can take drugs and they can grow drugs. Yeah, In America, in Europe, yeah, they can uh, plant your own marijuana and things like that. Okay, so uh, from what I'm trying to do with this exercise is looking at your response. Yeah, Looking at your response, um, some of you say A, some some of you say B, some some of you say C. You know, each one of you have your own perspective of uh, looking at this particular picture, and you have set your mind to what you think of what she needs to do. Yeah, she has every rights to do. She is not. She is, it is bad for her health. If she is pregnant. No, she's too young to be pregnant, but if she is really uh, an adult that, that is pregnant, uh, it affects her, uh, you know, uh, baby, yeah? So, uh, every one of you is actually, uh, can be, uh, can be categorized as either one of these, yeah? So, either you are naturalist, positivist, liberalist, moralist, historic, historicalist, Islamic, uh, feminist, you know? and quite a number uh, more of uh, approach. Yeah? You might be a Marxist. It, only upon making this uh, small statement whether she is having her rights to smoke, right? If she is smoking because she's, you are looking at it as that is her right, so she can do whatever she wants. Obviously, you are a liberalist, okay? Uh, if you are saying that smoke, Law, uh, smoking is wrong yeah, against the law, then you are a positivist. Uh, if you're looking at it from the perspe perspective that this is something that is naturally done, uh, you know, everyone have every uh, right to think whether their action is going to give them positive or negative uh, outcome, you will, you will be called a naturalist. Some would say that it's haram, you know, uh, then you'll be looking at it from the Islamist point of view. So, actually, uh, we are looking at things from the perspective of what the jurist has already identified, okay? When we are judging something about the law, whether the law is like this or the law should be like that, then we are actually 
putting ourselves uh, under that category of uh, juris. Okay, you might be saying that we are looking at the juris point of view. No, we are looking at our perspective. That is why uh, when I ask you to come to class, you just ignore your uh, fundamental belief uh, that you have. Uh, then uh, we will be able to look things in a, uh, a new perspective. Okay, uh, right. So what is just so far? Questions? So far, any questions? Maybe she's having a bad day. Yeah, only yeah. Uh, maybe yeah. So people do what they need to do in order for them to release themselves. Okay. Uh, what is jurisprudence in terms of? Okay, we have learned so far uh, that law have some basis of objectivity. There is an objective of why you are learning that law. Say, for example, you are learning land law. What is the objective of land law? What is the objective of learning land law? Uh, to learn the rights of uh, rights and liabilities of landowners. Yeah, the rights and liabilities of landowners, right? Uh, once you establish that rights and uh, liabilities, uh, then you will be able to say that particular person have the right to claim his uh, rights or, you know, to depart from the land that he or she is having, to sell it off to somebody else, you know, to sue, uh, you know, you go through that process, right? If later on in the next five years, from now you want to buy a land, so obviously you have to go through the process, yeah? The process uh, meaning the procedure uh, of buying a land. And that is entailed in the land, uh, land law, right? The uh, National Land Code. And the objective is to make things clear, yeah? To, to be able to have a system, yeah? a concrete system of land uh, administration in Malaysia, right? Uh, what is the name? Uh, what is the objective of uh, criminal law then? Yeah, Maria said the correct uh, correct uh, statement to understand how land is being administered. How about criminal then? Uh, I think criminal law governs the relationship between the state and the citizen and amongst the citizens. Okay, that is how. Uh, what is the objective? Uh, to prevent crimes. To prevent crimes, eh? And why? Uh, why uh, again? So why uh, prevention of crime is important? To Good. maintain peace and order. Uh, peace and order in the country, right? So we cannot have peace and order if we were to have crimes, yeah? Uh, in, uh, in the number, the rates of crime increase, so everyone else is, uh, you know, unable to do their, their activities, yeah? So the economy will go down, and then the company will, uh, the company, the country will go down. Okay, uh, you can look at countries in Africa uh, without, the ability to maintain uh, structure, maintain the law, so no commerce can be done. Uh, and and if you look at Iran, you know, as Iran, as, uh, Iraq, yeah? Iraq, Syria, so things are going haywire because uh, there is no structure in that manner. So all the while that uh, I already mentioned this, uh, you have learned so far about the uh, law. Uh, the law can be categorized into two things. One is substance, one is procedure. So it depends. Sometimes uh, you have a law that is a combination of both, uh, like uh, National Land Code. National Land Code is more towards procedure and also at the same time talks about substance. If you look at uh, constitutional law, it is more of the substance rather than procedure. Yeah. Uh, if you look at... Uh, Criminal law, it is more of substance. Uh, you look at uh, CPC, Criminal Procedure or Civil Procedure Code, then uh, it is more towards procedure. So uh, all this one, 
uh, jurisprudence is a study that let you explore and the very nature of this law that you have learned and what you will discover in the entire course of your study. So because you never question so far, you never question the law that you have learned. Uh, I don't know whether you, you have become timid. Yeah? Uh, you don't want to ask questions because you are afraid that the lecturer might be uh, unhappy with you. I do have certain situation uh, after my my class uh, when I promote student to question, <laughs> to argue, you know, but it seems that our Western uh, way of uh, teaching, uh, lecturers don't like us to argue, you know, agree to disagree and things like that. But uh, you, you have that, you, have, you must have that in your mind and try to do it in a manner that you are able to uh, ask questions in a very uh, proper manner and uh, you know not not to be arrogantly uh, seen by the lecturer sometimes lecturers are very defensive eh? so uh, you know you have to play that game uh, but you have to question them yeah from now on uh, because you are heading towards part seven and part six eh? sorry part six or eh? part seven juris one right they are heading towards part six part seven and part eight those three uh, semesters are very important to uh, build your character yeah as a lawyer or as a legal thinker so uh, you should be able to you know be out from your cocoon yeah, from the last five semesters or four semesters and including of your uh, asasi you should be able uh, to have a good strong uh, understanding of the law and you should be have uh, uh, to analyze should be able to analyze the law and ask questions okay so, so examples yeah when it comes to thought jurisprudence in terms of uh, thoughts yeah uh, any example that you can come across i think i already mentioned last week right about law of thoughts thoughts is more towards what procedural or substantive is it substantive or procedural law S substantive substantive eh? it's about uh, how eh? uh, sorry it's about what rather than how uh, how there is a element of how in law of thoughts because uh, some process or procedure must be established by the court in order to determine whether a person is liable under the law of thoughts. Uh, one example is like uh, the neighborhood principle I uh, discussed with you last week, right? When it comes to neighborhood principle, is a principle that is being established in order for us to determine whether you owe that uh, responsibility to that person or not. You owe a duty. So in order for you to owe a duty, there must be two uh, process yeah, that you have to establish. Number one, i.e. process or test. Number one would be? If, if you are talking about negligence. Lah. Who remembers? Under the law, uh, the thought of negligence, okay. Thought of negligence is that if you were to do something to someone else that you should foresee, then you are going to be responsible to the losses of that person. Yeah, it's things that you can foresee, lah. So, what will be the test then? Uh, the test of reasonableness. Okay. In order to establish negligence, equals to. duty plus the formula the duty of care breach plus of duty breach of duty and and damage. then the damage damages yeah okay you have to establish that in order to establish duty breach and damage there will be tests for each one of them right in order for you to prove to the court that uh, you owe a duty you have breached that duty of the uh, uh, standard that you have to maintain and then uh, the damages is caused by you alone eh? uh, not by anyone else so uh, that is the procedure part but as far as uh, thought in general 90 percent of the thought is about uh, to determine the substance yeah 
So uh, you can look at all the other contract law. Contract law. What what would be the principle uh, in terms of that? Uh, in terms of jurisprudence. What you have learned? What is the substance of law of thoughts? What is the main principle of law of thoughts that you have to remember? What is the first element that you have to uh, uh, establish? If you people ask you about about uh, contract law, okay. Apo, Whether there's a valid contract between the two yeah. people How, involved in the parties, two parties. Yeah. Two parties, okay. What what do you need to establish then? Contract. The, the elements. The understanding. And the elements, yeah. The elements is to formulate what? To show that they are what uh, we call uh, uh, meeting of minds, yeah. They have that meeting of mind. If you don't have this element of contract fulfilled, then it shows that there they are no elements of mind. Freedom of contract means that you are free to do whatever you want. And when you are able to do what you want, how do you determine whether there is a contract or, or between you and the other person? Is the consensus at Eden. Betul tak? There is a meeting of mind. Yes, okay. sir. Yes. Okay. So uh, that is the principle of jurisprudence. When, when you are talking about uh, a law, the law have a uh, objective, yeah? The law have objective. We, so far, uh, have not argued when it comes to Catalan's constitutional law. I already mentioned about Tejen Po, right? Uh, all this while, you learn about SK is not valid because nobody, uh, the Yang Departamento cannot continue with the uh, creation of law when parliament already sit, right? So, uh, why why it's like that why cannot have two people in the country running the the, the game the show because nanti there's no uh, uh when there's two when there's two drivers uh -huh. around, there's, the direction would not be the same yeah imagine it, uh, uh, the country is the uh, is a car you cannot have two drivers right so yes. that is the argument that we have one god <laughs> we cannot we cannot have many gods yeah because many gods will make things uh, uh haywire so constitutional law talks about uh why because uh, in that particular sense if one of the law is invalid what happened in the case of tejempo what happened eventually in tejempo he was released right but eventually they, they uh, repeat the law, backdated it to 1957. Eventually he was he was uh, caught and sentenced to uh, death. Now, uh, what if a law is considered as invalid? Do you know what I'm trying to ask you? When it comes to Tejempo, if the law is really invalid and he is to be freed, why on earth that the government try so hard in order to get back to him? He is so uh, so wanted that the government wants to punish him because they they found a revolver inside uh, is uh, you know with him right. So when they do that uh, roadblocks in Penang when there was a robbery. So why is it so important that the government wants to punish him? In order to preserve justice, I guess. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, other than that, anyone? To, to warn other citizens not to repeat his crime. Okay, that is the main objective of the law, right? To control the uh, behavior of the society. Okay. Remember, in, in our class, anything goes, yeah? Uh, there is no right and wrong answer. Uh, 
Ada tak? To show their power, okay. Good. Can you imagine uh, if he were to be released and be due to the law that is invalid, he was caught in 1970-something, 19, right? So 75, if I'm not mistaken. The law was created in 1960, what, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the riots, eh? 13 May 1965. Eh? Was it 65? 65. Uh, 65. From 65 until 75, uh, roughly about 10 years, you know, uh, many people was captured and sentenced to death. Okay, if in suddenly 1975, then uh, the court says actually the law that you have been using to call uh, to kill people or this one is wrong. What will happen to the government? There would be an uprising. People get yeah, mad because how can you kill someone uh, when there is no law? You can only do something to someone if there is the, if the law provides so. Right, if the parliament or Yang Diptongo in case of emergency is allowing for you to do so, so they allow for you to kill. But if that allowance is no longer valid, then all the what, hundreds of people that you have already killed is actually you cannot kill them, it's wrong. Yeah, it's a criminal act. Yeah, you cannot kill someone without justification of the law, so that is why. We need to identify whether that, that particular law is correct or not. And this is where jurisprudence comes in, where uh, when it comes to uh, issues, eh, when there is no law, the jurisprudence needs to solve that problem. Yeah, sorry. Uh, just like the penggunaan nama Allah eh, by the Christians, there was an issue that goes to the federal court, right? So, issues of that nature, when there is no law to guide, yeah, there is no provision of uh, statute that is able to give uh, proper guidance, then jurisprudence is the uh, method that is being used in order for the solution to be found. And th there is various uh, principle of jurisprudence that you can utilize in order for you to come out with your answer okay so in all the papers that you have learned jurisprudence has been uh, applied yeah it's just a matter of you not being able to decipher it or maybe you have uh, able to do that which is good what you need to do later on in the next coming uh, semesters this semester onwards and throughout your life you should be able to look at the foundations of why uh, that particular law exists, uh, for what purpose, what is the objective, and things like that. Okay, so that is why you are learning jurisprudence. Yeah, jurisprudence is in that nature. Yeah, so I mentioned about four wife and one husband. Eh? Okay, uh, if there is no law as guidance, this is what is going to happen. Yeah, wait, eh? Okay, this is what happened uh, when the law is non existent. Yeah? Oh, kalau berapa banyak saya membunuh Boleh dengar tak? Saya tidak tidak Boleh Tapi tidak tidak banyak Tapi saya potongnya sudah pakai emosi Bunuh beta Tak bunuh saya Saya Ronald Reagan Bekas Kemendahan Tentara Anak Pasukan Agas Kota Ambon Saya Skandar Selamet Saya mantan pasukan jihad di Ambon. The patchwork of Christian and Muslim communities on the island set about destroying each other as businesses and properties were put to the torch. 
Kita saat itu, saat itu kita beranggap kalau ini adalah perang suci. Kita membela agama dan membela tempat tinggal kita. Saya membunuh mereka saat itu dengan menggunakan senjata, rakitan, menembak mereka itu dalam jarak yang sangat dekat. Mempertontonkan mayat lawan itu seperti membuat kita semakin kuat, semakin menggebu-gebu masuk dalam bidang pertempuran. Kita cukup sadis. Kalau saya sendiri masuk dengan dendam, saya punya dendam yang cukup kuat. Saudara sepupu saya juga ketembak mati di tempat. Di tempat ini orang-orang yang saya bunuh pun sering datang dalam tidur dan mimpi saya. Kita selalu menghantui. Perjalanan kita daerah Muslim itu cuma sekitar kurang lebih ada cuma ada sekitar berapa kilo aja dari Talakir ke Stein. Stres. Kayak kita tuh nggak bebas. Kita cuma jalan di tempat itu situ lagi situ lagi situ lagi. Bisa nggak kita melangkah di sebelah? Mau melangkah di sebelah tapi ada rasa takut mbak. Saya dibunuh nggak? Jadi bandar, jadi pemakai, kehidupan malam. Seandainya bisa berputar waktu kembali saya ingin ke, seperti anak-anak zaman sekarang sih bermain zaman dulu saya melihat begitu banyak sampai teman-teman dekat pun meninggal yang saya lihat hanya darah dan mayat dan rumah-rumah yang terbakar dan kadang masa kecil yang bahagia untuk saya sih Masih dengan curiga, kita datang dengan curiga. Kita mulai dengan lirik-lirik aja, melihatnya nggak berani sini. Nggak berani tegur kok. Pas tahu dia muslim dan dia pemimpin dari pasukan jihad mini, di situ kita hampir hampir berantem dan hampir hampir saling bunuh di situ. Untung cepat panitianya langsung melalai dan mereda. Kita tulis amarahnya kita, emosinya kita, rasa bencinya kita, rasa dendamnya kita. Kemudian kita bakar semua rame-rame. Saya bilang saya paling benci sama orang Kristen. Karena mereka, sepupu saya mati ditembak depan saya. Tapi akhirnya kita bakar semua. Kita bercerita kalau di orang Kristen itu isunya kayak gini. Di Islam juga bercerita isunya kayak gini. Padahal, loh kok isu, isunya sama. Nah kita juga sama-sama, sama-sama tidak tahu. Dari situlah kita mulai sadar, oh, ternyata ini, ini hanya sebatas komunikasi sebenarnya. Honel yang bisa bikin kita semua akhirnya benar-benar nangis. Gitu. Honel cuma bisa bangkit dan bilang, itu paling sayang kamu sama <laughs> Itu lah sih. Lebur udah tuh. Mewak udah semua. Nangis. Itu paling sayang kamu sama Karena kita bilang kamu sama kita saudara. Siapa bikin kamu beta yang ada di muka? Siapa yang bikin kamu katong yang tongkan di muka? Kamu kak katolang katong yang ada di muka kamu. Hendakku susuri dengan nafas di mancung hidungmu. Mengapa kau putar muka saudara? Hendak kurabak. Karena saya basicnya dance, saya ajak-ajak untuk ajak kawan-kawan untuk menari dan mengajak kawan-kawan untuk melukis, baca puisi dengan berkarya kita tunjukkan ke mereka kalau ya oke, okay. kita mungkin dulu kita membunuh sesuai dengan apa yang kalian katakan kita merusak ambon. Sekarang kita ingin membangun ambon. Kita akan 
Kita anak muda Maluku, kita lah penerus Maluku ke depan. Konflik Maluku itu tidak ada kalah atau menang, karena kita banyak yang mati, ya. kita banyak yang juga rumah-rumah kita banyak yang terbakar, sama juga dengan mungkin juga sama yang Kristen. Justru kita ini adalah imbas dari entahlah siapa yang punya perbuatan yang kita, para akhirnya kita yang kena imbas. Harapan mungkin um, semua titik mati ada di generasi kita aja, biarkan generasi kita yang merasakan itu dan yang mungkin dengan menceritakan kisah kita, um, mungkin orang di luar sana menonton dan mereka mengambil hikmah dari apa yang kita rasakan di sini. Di kau penjaga zaman yang jantan, mari menyanyikan lagu nenek moyang. Sorry, uh, the line is getting <laughs> not stable. Okay, uh, if you look at that uh, video just now, what do you think? That is what happened if there is no law, uh, law and order in a given society, the society starts to crumble and then they will start to kill one another and nothing uh, fruitful is going to be uh, getting from the transaction yeah, or from the incident. So uh, where, whether their acts is justified, whether they are both right or both wrong, yeah. So this is something that we have to uh, we have to ponder, yeah, because the law is so important in establishing uh, the stability of the society, and obviously from the jurisprudential part, in order for us to find the proper way of uh, establishing uh, establishing peace, uh, maybe is something that is most uh, crucial for us to uh, look upon or to discover. For example, we have this uh, Malaysian uh, perspective of uh, discrimination. Yeah, uh, We have discrimination between uh, the non-Muslim and the uh, Bumi Putra and the Muslim uh, or the Malays, yeah? the Malay rights and Bumi Putra rights. Uh, that is what we call affirmative action, right? So where does this affirmative action come from? Uh, is it a, a is it a creation of our own or is it something that is coming from jurisprudential part it is coming from the jus, jus, uh, juries in order for them to say that how to uh, administer a country properly when you have disparity in a, in a society whether it is right or wrong for us to continue having this uh, so called uh, affirmative action laws uh, in our country that is another issue but in 1957, that is the reality of things. If things are not being put into order, we might end up in a uh, riot in 1969. It might be worse than that. Okay? I still remember my brother said that during the 1969 uh, riots, uh, he was uh, in, in, uh, in Kampung Pandan. Yeah? In Pandan. And uh, he uh, heard someone was uh, walking uh, in, in in, on the road yeah, where you are not supposed to uh, and he heard shots yeah, shots and the army when they come into our civilian society their aim is to win yeah, not to, to not to administer justice uh, like what the police uh, or order from what the police is doing so you do not let army to come into the civilian world because they are there to to win yeah so they shoot and, and uh, within a few seconds the truck came and uh, pulled that person onto the truck and take him away. Irrespective whether you are uh, uh, justified in doing that, you know, anyone who opens up their door uh, trying to sneak will be shot upon, you know, things like that. It, it is in a worse situation that we could be in uh, in our entire history of Malaysia. So. Uh, that is why jurisprudence is important for us to uh, understand 
especially when you are practicing later on, uh, either you are as a judge or you are as the uh, uh, lawyer. Yeah. So you have to be able to understand the jurisprudential uh, perspective of any issues in order for you to see the, uh, the uh, issue clearly. Okay, uh, so far, any questions that you want to ask? Kesian tak ada orang eh? What happened to them? Uh, hopefully nothing happens to us in that manner. Any questions that you want to ask so far? So, uh, if there is none, uh, so we look at this uh, next slide, how jurisprudence is being derived. Uh, we look at the jurisprudential uh, views of juries. Yeah? So, as I already mentioned, you have to remember them, uh, their names and their, their thinking. You know? Do not rely on uh, the books that you have with you uh, from your seniors. Uh, it is misleading, but if you can use it to enhance your understanding by all means, you can do that. Yeah. Uh, why uh, can I be the one uh, making use potential views? Uh, if we are not at that level uh, to be able to come up with our use potential views, uh, where these use potential views are being made by people who are uh, esteem eh, uh, uh, thinkers, yeah? they are uh, either they are well, scientists, uh, uh, social scientists, uh, whether they are theories, you know, and uh, they, they are like uh, from hundreds of years uh, or thousands of years, they have established that th kind of thinking and so that particular thinking is actually being accepted by the society, you know. Uh, how do I get their knowledge? Obviously by reading and how do I remember what and who uh, so that I can apply them to where and why. Uh, this is something that you have to understand. Once you understand Mr. A, so for example, you want to understand uh, Jeremy Bentham uh, or uh, John Stuart Mill. You know? it, once they, you know them, uh, they are thinking and then you should be able to and this is where the final will come in to test you whether you understand uh, the whole concept uh, of jurisprudential perspective of Jewish one yeah, under the syllabus. As I already mentioned, do not cross over and put someone that we have never uh, introduced in our uh, syllabus. Uh, why, why it is like that? Because I thought it was a freedom of you to understand anything. It can come from anyone. Yeah, it, it might be the one that uh, you argument that you might uh, raise, uh, but no, we are looking only to the established uh, jurisprudential views, and in order for us to streamline everyone, in order for them to understand a few things, and then we will be testing you on that. Otherwise, if we were to open uh, the floodgate, then uh, we would not have one standard that we can uh, identify whether that person understand the jurisprudential perspective or not. The, these are all world-renowned people and uh, being applied uh, in uh, most of the countries in the world or in the legal uh, decision yeah, uh, of courts throughout the world. Uh, okay, so one, okay, let's look at the first area. The, who do we study? Uh, we will need to study those on classical period, modern period and postmodern period, yeah? 1960s and to the current. So uh, the postmodern, you'll be studying them uh, in Juris 2, right? Uh, modern period is uh, for Juris 1 and classical period is also uh, Juris 1. Sir? Yeah. I'm sorry, um, are you sharing the slide right now? Oh my god, no, I see, see. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Sorry. Sorry. No, it's okay. You please, Nia. Please uh, remind me because sometimes so many things to to maintain. Okay. Do we? Who do we study? The classical period. Yeah. Can you see this? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. We have classical period, modern period, and postmodern period. Uh, 1960s to current, uh, which are, you're going to learn in Juris 2. Uh, but the, the modern period and classical period, we'll be learning uh, in Juris 1. Yeah? 
So uh, we look at the classical period first, Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, Cicero. Okay, hopefully we will be able to complete them by today. So philosophers and jurists, uh, what would be the differences between them? You know, uh, do you know philosophers are thinkers of uh, they, they love to think, but jurists they are deeper than that. Yeah? Uh, if you have this analogy of a root, yeah, philosophy you can see on the right side, the uh, top side. Okay, philosophy love of thinking uh, where we contain all the philosophers. However. Uh, if we look at the uh, jurisprudence, it's only one one branch yeah, of the root, yeah, whereby uh, philosophy of law is very specific, yeah, very specific that is meant for uh, law alone. Yeah, so we have legal thinkers or legal philosophers uh, thinking about the nature of law, and uh, on top of that, other branches we can compare and contrast. They are philosoph uh, philosophers of language of politics, of religion, history, education, maths, and so on. Okay, there are many, yeah, but we are looking at only one of the branch yeah, of the rules. Okay, uh, let's look at the meaning of law. If you look at the meaning of law, obviously there, there are various interpretations of the law, and obviously no single interpretation can be uh, definite, yeah. Uh, Obviously, if you were to do some uh, uh, interpretation of law uh, by your understanding, cannot be defined. Yeah, throughout the time, interpretation of law differs. Yeah, because uh, the society that uh, we have over that time, how they understand the law is different. Uh, if you look at the nature of uh, when we were during zaman Kesultanan Melayu Melaka, if you were born there. Today, uh, if you are living in that uh, situation, your understanding of the law is different because law is something that is uh, ordained by the uh, king and uh, he has the authority by virtue of what? Uh, status that is given by God. Okay, And uh, coming back today, if you utilize the same argument, you would definitely reject that uh, statement saying that nobody is ordained by God, only uh, for the prophets, eh, for us to identify. Even that people who doesn't believe in religion say that prophets are just human beings, therefore they are nothing. Now, uh, it de depends on the uh, time, it depends on the locality that you are in. So, obviously, it carries different meaning. Okay, so meaning of classical period, let's look at the classical period, which is uh, in Greece, yeah, 400 BC to uh, 0 BC, 0 BC, yeah, considered as uh, Christ, yeah, before Christ and after Christ. Uh, uh, did not talk specifically on law, but li or towards life and society. Yeah, back then, people don't do not actually uh, talk about law. Even some of them do talk about law because the gist of what of what they are doing is about law. Say, for example, Plato, yeah. Aristotle, they, they produce books, yeah, uh, which is basically about law. Okay, I don't, I, I can't remember what is this. Uh, let me have a look. Eh? What is the video? I don't know whether we should see this. Or not. Okay, uh, let's see this. Eh? How do I? Sorry, guys. Yeah. Send things. Can you hear the the voice? Is it cracking, like the it used to be? Just now. No, sir. No. Okay. Good. Pop quiz: Are you a Platonist or an Aristotelian? An idealist or? Oh. An... Is it is it something that is? Cracking? No, it is. It is, eh? Yeah. No, no, or oh, yes? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Cracking, eh? Sekali An empiricist. Hmm, tak boleh, tak boleh. Okay. So, uh, later you have a look at this uh, video. Uh, once I uh, give you the, 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 uh, the slides. 
Okay, let me share the slide, Bali. Hold on. Okay. Continuing the slide. Uh, we do have uh, uh, what we call Sophia or sophists, yeah? uh, people who thought how, uh, what law is. Yeah? They are lectures of law, yeah? what we call uh, back then, uh, lectures of law. Uh, they go from house to house to teach, uh, to teach the knowledge of how to defend yourself. Because back then, you have to present your case, you have to like, defend yourself yeah? when somebody is uh, making a claim towards you the art of uh, defending yourself yeah? that is being taught by this sophist now uh, plato uh, he is the one that uh, produced uh, the first university in the world academy and he raised uh, questions yeah about why do we have to uh, obey the law yeah uh, whether it is justified for us to go against the law or not. So Plato is against Sophies uh, in a way that uh, from his writing because he portrays Socrates, uh, his uh, like uh, his actually teacher. Socrates is his teacher of Plato, uh, the teacher of Plato. Eh? So Plato in his writing, he might uh, Socrates did not write anything. Uh, Plato is the one that is writing about Socrates. Now, so he portrays that Socrates doesn't like sophists. Yeah, the sophists, as I mentioned, people who taught the law, and uh, they they uh, will charge. Yeah, they uh, will have to be given fees. But Socrates, uh, according to Plato, did not charge anything. Okay, uh, it is for free, and uh, he is actually uh, what they call it cobbler, eh? uh, a person that is living on the street. And people like to see him because they like him uh, to make them ponder, uh, make them uh, question about everything. Rather than uh, sophists, where sophists they charge, and uh, also the standard of their teaching is is uh, not the way that the, the youngsters back then would like to study law or study life. Yeah, so uh, he asked us to reason uh, in order for us to know the truth. We have to use our brain, we have to ask questions in order for us to identify whether we have to follow the law or not. And uh, truth is about justice, equality and fairness and uh, the first duty, duty to civil law uh, whether you are to follow the law or to follow your conscience. Uh, Maybe you are not getting me uh, this. Uh, what if I were to say, why do you, why don't you kill? Is it something that is through the provision of the law because the law pre, uh, prohibits you from killing, or maybe because you don't want to kill? If you want to kill, why you don't want to kill? What is the reason? Huh? It is, but can stay. What do you think about, can you listen to me or, or are you able to listen to me or not? Still, yes, yeah? Sir. Okay, good. So, uh, my question to you is that if killing is wrong, why do you think that killing is wrong? Why? Because we're not caught, we shouldn't, we shouldn't take a life. Uh, you shouldn't. Who says that you shouldn't uh, take a life? Danis uh, kata not morally right, Nabil kata conscience. Really just say we can. Where do you get the conscience from, Nabil? Sorry, uh, somebody said, God, okay. Uh, who else? So if based on the social contract, we shouldn't be harming another person. Um, Why? Where is the contract then? I, um, there isn't a social contract, an implied contract between members of the society. If I don't uh, sign any contract, why should I follow that contract? 
I mean, those who are using religious excuse in saying that religion is clearly stating that you are not to kill. Uh, one marine uh, marine kata empathy. Empathy. What makes you have the empathy? Because once you start killing another person, the family of the other person will kill you, and then it goes on and on and on. So, mm. so what is the outcome then? So, uh, uh, apa, there'll be apa, uh, not war, chaos. but like chaos. Chaos. Uh, so, uh, chaos in our society because, you know, have you seen the movie, uh, what do you call it? That you allow to kill a, uh, anyone you like within one whole day? Yeah, that. The uh, Purge. Yeah. yeah, the yeah, movie Purge, right? Uh, so the Purge, yeah. If you look at that movie, that that situation, if you were to allow uh, things to happen, would it, would it not uh, be a good uh, way of uh, releasing our stress? <laughs> no, because uh, for the next part, you'll be fearing for your life because you already you went out to kill another, so the family of that person will come and kill you. So it's a never-ending yeah, yeah. cycle. It never end the cycle, right? Correct. So uh, here, uh, the main thing that he is trying to say, the duty for you to follow the law is because the law uh, actually brings goodness to the society. You have been living so far in our society, uh, let's say in Malaysia, because the law that has been providing us uh, the security that, the, of life that we have in Malaysia so far is good. And then suddenly we have one law that says that you don't agree uh, with it, then should you ignore the law? What do you think? I mean, if the uh, law needs uh, amending uh, to fit with the current world, then yes. Yeah, okay. So, uh, in Socrates' situation, he was attacked by Sophies, you know, uh, when they are not happy, they don't get any more students, you know, they, they are jealous of him because he doesn't charge, but yet he has so many uh, students coming to see him. All he, he, he did was uh, to make the, the, them to inquire about things. So, uh, eventually, they they uh, charge him of uh, uh, what they call it uh, disbelieving in the uh, gods yeah, of uh, that that day, and then on top of that, uh, misleading the uh, mental or, or the ideology of the youngsters at that point of time. So uh, they sentence him to death. Now, while he was uh, in capture. They ask him, just just admit, yeah, you just admit to your wrongdoings, and they will like uh, you know put you somewhere uh, on an island. Still, you you will be living, yeah. Uh, but he doesn't agree. You know, he say he says all this while that I have been uh, living because of the law that has been applied to me. I have no problem with it. But when it comes to this particular law that. Uh, wants me to die. If I need to die, then I have to die. Okay. If you read uh, Socrates, uh, Plato's writing on Socrates, uh, you will see the, how he argues yeah, in terms of uh, obe obedience towards the law. Okay. I, I'm, th there's so many uh, things that I want to inform you, but uh, due to the time limit, uh, I hope that you are able to uh, do readings on your own. I will provide you, I, I think I've already provided you with the link, right? But if you want to have more uh, about this, I can uh, easily pass it to you later on. So uh, that is Plato writings, yeah? he had quite a number of books that he produced. Uh, we still have uh, the books until today. Uh, Aristotle is the student of Plato. Okay, Plato is the student of Socrates. Uh, Cicero is the one that is living uh, during the period of Caesar. Yeah, he is a lawyer. Uh, that, okay, that, that, that is what I'm trying to say is that these thinkers uh, back then, they are trying to ask you to find uh, the truth by virtue of uh, thinking or uh, asking questions. Yeah, so 
let's look at uh, Socrates. Uh, as I mentioned, no writings. Yeah, uh, some of the uh, 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 writers, Plato, Zophion, uh, Aristotle, yeah, Aristophanes, did mention about him, uh, and they, with that, says that he is uh, in existence. Okay. Uh, so we have the Socratic problems that he raised uh, in his uh, stand view of uh, law, okay, uh, or politics, yeah. Uh, method of knowledge, uh, probing philosopher, meaning if you were to have a person, dia macam budak-budak kecil, yeah. Uh, it's like if you have a, a child asking you a question, then you are unable to answer, or if you give that child an answer, he will start to ask based on that. Okay, it's just like bangau or bangau, uh, you know, uh, song, right? Where uh, you ask again and again, uh, the question is going to be repeated repeatedly and asked over and over again, and uh, until it makes sense, yeah until it makes sense. In bangau or bangau, the last would be uh, ular kenapa makan, makan apa? Tikus eh? What was the name? Anyone knows about uh, bangau or bangau? Yes. Bangau. Uh, what was the last? Uh, the, the, because of the rice and then because of the rat and then uh, the snake kills the rat, right? So, uh, uh, snake, why do you kill the rats? Uh, it is my food. <laughs> So you, you go to the extent that you try to find the truth by by uh, listing down questions again and again. You ask and ask and ask until you are able to discover the truth, okay, the reality. So uh, this is what uh, uh, what they call it uh, to Socrates. Eh? Uh, he was sentenced to death by poisoning. Uh, we have uh, Plato. Plato, uh, you can uh, look at the YouTube link here. I put uh, uh, Plato's uh, idea. Now, basically, Plato is trying to uh, ask us to achieve uh, eudaimonia, fulfillment. Uh, let me pause kerja. Eh? Uh, if you're looking at this, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, philosophers or jurists, eh? uh, not jurists per se, but philosophers, these philosophers uh, back then, they are more towards uh, asking you individually to be able to find yourself in order for you to understand yourself. They do not ask, uh, they do not pre present something that is in general. Uh, law is not about everyone. Law is about you. Okay? If you are able to change, it is all about individual. It, if the individual can change, uh, and collectively, all individuals can change, and the whole society will change. Okay? It is not like what we are applying today. Law is being uh, passed down to the society, and for the society to absorb, and society to uh, obey. Now, obedience is based on your understanding. If you force someone to force them to obey, just like just now, uh, the girl who smoked, you cannot force that person to stop smoking just because you are, uh, you say that I am the law. Just like what uh, what uh, Kerajaan Kelantan wants to do to prohibit uh, certain uh, behavior of the society. If society wants to do it, negative uh, behavior, they will still find ways to do it. There's no point for you to, to stop because, you know, if one person wants to do evil thing, they will do that evil thing, irrespective of whether you have law or not. That is why people, we see nowadays, people still do negative things. Yeah, There are laws, but the laws does not prevent them from doing things. And uh, according to some juries, uh, according to this jurist, yeah, basically, uh, you don't do things because you understand the reason why you are not doing things. You don't kill because you know why you don't want to kill and the effects of the killing. You know, it's going to be repetition uh, and then the society will start to collapse. So uh, your understanding, the individual understanding is the mo the core of this, uh, 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 the, the group of people yeah, that is uh, portraying that individual have to understand the law. Okay. So, uh, 
compared to this uh, current uh, juries, they are more towards uh, idea. Yeah, they promote an idea. That idea would have some people, uh, you know, accepting it and following it. But uh, some people, you know, have some other ideas. So coming back to uh, Plato, he says that actually we in this world we are trying to find fulfillment, yeah, of our life. So some people they are they don't know what they are doing. They say that, that they are in limbo. Uh, I I don't know what is the meaning of life. Life is hopeless. Uh, I don't see the clarity of life. You know, actually, uh, you want to be able to feel fulfilled. You know. You want to find that happiness in life, okay? So in order for you to find that happiness or fulfillment, uh, you might be asking, what do you mean by fulfillment? Okay, have you ever helped someone uh, in trouble? If law is made to maintain the peace and control of people to behave in case of the law itself, it's not in line with the people mind nowadays. Like the act of committing suicide is an offense. Is it a little harsh? What do you mean by that, uh, James? Um, what I mean, sir, is that um, when the law is made um, mm -hmm. to maintain the peace and, of course, to control the behavior of the people. True. But in a case where the law itself is not in line with what the people think right now, like um, the law itself stated that oh, um, an act where a person is committing um, suicide, Suicide, it will amount to a crime. So yeah, it will be a quite the law itself is quite harsh for the people who have mm -hmm. a mental problem like that to being um, mm -hmm. prosecuted by the law. True. So the moral of the story: if you want to commit uh, suicide, what do you need to do? Or maybe like uh, it, right? um, oh, sorry. Uh, you have to do it right so that you wouldn't be persecuted. <laughs> or maybe like if you want to commit, <laughs> yeah, I do agree with that. Uh, if you want to commit suicide, make sure you are dead. So therefore, you are not going to be prosecuted. Okay, sir. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> because that's a bit uh, insensitive, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that is the reality, right? If you, uh, if you, <laughs> if you are not making sure that you die, then uh, the law will come in to punish you just because you uh, make a, a trial to, to commit suicide. Yeah? You have an attempt, attempt uh, suicide. Okay, uh, I don't know whether I uh, answer you, James. But uh, is it something of uh, nature like you have uh, learned about medical law? Euthanasia, uh, mercy killing. Yes, sir. Uh, so that is an issue, right? How come if that law is prevailing to throughout the world, how come the European countries, some of the European countries allow for mercy killing? Is it something that is odd? I mean, if that person is suffering, then why mm -hmm. uh, shouldn't that person stop his suffering and just... Yeah. There is a positive and negative euthanasia, right? Yeah. A active and passive euthanasia. So that uh, in, in itself is an issue for you to be able to determine whether if I want to die and I don't want it to uh, lengthen my... my uh, be on earth so then it's up to me to decide so i have a story that i uh, that my wife uh, <laughs> she always uh, remind to my family members do not let her uh, let me decide whether i want to off the uh, life support system or not because i would definitely off the system why because to me death is death if it's fated it's fated then uh, uh, if you if you that is the time of on uh, of you on us then that's it but she always uh, remind my family member do not let me decide uh, to off the system because there is a chance that she might be able to survive <laughs> okay uh, i don't know whether i answer you jim because uh, jury is uh, uh, player 
it is odd in the sense that there is no correct answer. Okay, what we are to do is just investigate and uh, know them. Once we are able to know them and uh, we choose which one that is close to our hearts. So my duty is actually presenting you with all these people and what they say about uh, things, yeah? especially when uh, they, they, they are talking about law. Uh, okay, coming back. <laughs> coming back to uh, Plato, uh, my question before uh, I answer James just now uh, is uh, fulfillment. Do you ever be in a position that you have helped somebody out from their problems that they are facing and uh, you manage to settle their problem? How, how, how do you feel? Relief, yes. Satisfied, good. Useful, yes. And did you not feel happy? Happy is a, a, a proud, yes. It is a, all this. I, you talk about relief, uh, satisfied, useful, proud. They are fulfillment things, elements that is in your in your heart. You you feel happy, yeah. You're happy in the sense that you feel useful, proud, relief, satisfied, yeah. And um, these are the aim of our uh, life, actually, to be useful for the society and by doing good deeds. Yeah. So uh, in order to do that, he says that uh, one have to uh, go through these four things. One is that thinking of uh, knowing yourself rather than on impulse, meaning you get to uh, know in the methods of Socratic discussion just now. You start to inquire. If you say that uh, killing is wrong, uh, you know, say for example, yeah, MCO, no, you are, you are, uh, I mean, uh, let you are being let go from your work. You don't have any work. You don't have any money. So therefore, you are pressured into paying your uh, debt. Yeah. Um, okay, lah. That is one thing. But if you have your kids, you know, your kid doesn't know anything. Uh, he or she is uh, hungry. So what do you do? Do you steal? Or what do you do? So you might have an answer in your mind, but this is what uh, uh, Latu is uh, saying, that you have to uh, yourself uh, rationalize why or, or uh, why you want to do it, why you don't want to do it. Okay, so to be able to think is one thing that is going to bring fulfillment to your life. Second, he says that let your lover change you. Okay. Um, you know, your lover who loves you wants to change you to, to the things that uh, it is better. Okay, because when you are in a relationship, you are loving the other person because you have seen the positive and the negative thing of that person. What you want to do is because that person doesn't see the negative thing of uh, himself or herself. You, as the person looking outside, yeah, from the outside looking inside of that person you know the negative part of that person. So you want to change that person's negative parts. Yeah? Uh, so does the, the other lover towards you. So they know what is your negative things which you never uh, realize and they want to change you to a better one. So this is where you are letting your lover change you. Okay? Uh, me, for example, uh, I, like to, uh, I like to spend my money. Right? I'm old. I like to spend my money that I, I think I deserve to, to spend. You know, my wife said that uh, rather than wasting your money on things that you like, you know, it's not your uh, needs, but uh, your wants. <laughs> okay. Uh, so why not you save it up you know, for your uh, later years? I say I might be dying, so I just want to enjoy. But she is having some kind of... Uh, uh, you know, woman, you have that uh, uh, forward thinking and she is able to uh, convince me to save money in order uh, for me to use that money when uh, later uh, in time, say for example, when I pension. So your lover, it, it, you will only get fulfillment if you are able to let your lover change you, yeah, to be a better person. Obviously, lover is the person 
that is going to change to a positive thing rather than negative. No lover is going to kill the other person by asking him to or her to do negative things. Yeah. And then the third one is to decade message of uh, message of beauty. Yeah. Uh, what are the things that you are missing in life? Yeah. So you like beauty, obviously, right? Uh, Allah ni maha cantik. Yeah. He is so beautiful uh, because the things that we can see around us is so beautiful, right? So we we'll see people, we we'll see animals, we we'll see uh, the environment. You know the how perfect it is, how beautiful it is. So uh, what you need to do is to find the qualities that is missing in your life right, in terms of beauty. So it is not only about work, work, work. You know, work is about money, but it is all about trying to fulfill yourself in terms of beauty. I, for one, who likes to uh, ride my bike. If I can't ride bike, I would go to the YouTube and look at uh, riding, you know, riding videos. And uh, I would like to see the beautiful environment that they, they while they were driving, and uh, immerse myself with the beauty of God. Yeah, and uh, I think if you are uh, if you are able to see a person who is a rider, and if you ask that person, the beauty that he is trying to to see is the beauty of God. Yeah, the the things that is so beautiful surrounding them. And the last one is the reform of the society by Purdue philosophers. Meaning, you are uh, an agent of the society whereby your duty is to produce philosophers, thinkers like yourself. Because number one, if you look at thinking number one just now, you are yourself uh, as a thinker, right? Because you apply Socratic uh, method. So the same thing as uh, you cannot be selfish. Uh, in order for you to know what is right, what is wrong, you have to let other people know also of how they are to achieve uh, fulfillment of the uh, oneself. Okay. So after this, if you are the one that is uh, knowing about law, law is not about you to make money. Obviously, it's all about money nowadays. Kan? You have to secure uh, uh, the best job possible, get the highest salary, uh, actually, according to Plato, no, you are not supposed to do that. You have to give back to the society in the sense that you have to, uh, uh, to produce philosophers out of them. Yeah? Thinking of yourself. If every one of us thinks about things, yeah, and uh, we would not do the things that we have done. Say for example, you see people smoking uh, in the car, and then throwing the butts yeah, outside the car, throwing their rubbish outside the, car, the, the, the their cars. Uh, the mentality is because you don't think. You just do it because of, uh, you want to do it. Yeah? The impulse is to, to, to do th these things. But you don't see this uh, in the Western world because they have gone to a level that they, they are able to think. And this is where uh, Plato's uh, idea has been absorbed into the society mindset, which is not yet uh, in us, uh, in our society. I saw in my own eyes, a person who parks the car next to the yellow and uh, what do you call it, green uh, dustbin, eh? uh, where you can just simply open your, uh, <laughs> open your door and throw it inside. She, I mean, literally next to her, but she opened the door, uh, opened the window and threw the rubbish on the floor. I don't know what, what is the idea, the thinking of that person. So first, you don't think about the environment, you don't think about the cleanliness, uh, cleanliness you don't think about uh, uh, what they call it, uh, the illness yeah, in terms of uh, the, the problem that it can bring to the society yeah, because filthy, yeah, filthy environment, filthy uh, condition of life. So uh, up until now, Sweden, they do not close down uh, under COVID. Yeah? They do not close down their economy, but uh, their numbers are getting lesser and lesser as compared to other uh, European countries who close their gates. So uh, why? Because the mentality is there. Okay? No matter uh, the hardship, uh, the, the risk that is so high, but still they can manage to pull it down because it is inside them. Yeah, they are with the uh, idea of the thinkers that uh, like Plato yeah, uh, to be able to produce good things.
questions so far? Okay, so uh, think about your life. Uh, this is the fulfillment. Try this. And uh, I've tried a number of times uh, uh, on not, not <laughs> I mean, uh, not uh, everything in, in one go. But uh, over a period of time, I've tried one, two, three, four. Uh, actually, it brings fulfillment yeah, to my life. Uh, try it out and uh, hopefully you will get that fulfillment also. Aristotle, the last one before we end the class. Uh, Aristotle is the, as I mentioned, he is the uh, student of Plato. Yeah? Uh, he is actually the student, uh, the master of Alexander the Great. Okay, uh, this is the Sifu of Alexander. So he taught Alexander, uh, I mean, Alexander and him have that relationship whereby when Alexander goes to the uh, West, uh, Eastern world, he used to uh, brought back, yeah? I mean, send back uh, a specimen because Aristotle is more towards physical. He looks at material thing, uh, materialistic thing. Materialistic meaning he looks at mathematics, physical, biology, zoology, metaphysics, logic, you know, uh, where he is uh, empiricist, yeah? empiricist meaning empirical data. He looks at all data. As compared to uh, Plato, Plato, as you can see here, is looking more towards uh, thinking. Yeah, it's more about rationalizing. So rational, you use your thinking to rationalize things. But uh, Aristotle is more towards looking at facts, data. Yeah. So anything of data that you can gather is uh, the one thing that should be able to uh, determine. Yeah, what you want uh, to change or what. Uh, you want to be able to uh, achieve, okay? Um, so uh, when it comes to example that you do not kill, right? For example, like here, you do not kill because you can see the uh, the impact, uh, the the impact of that particular act that should be going to be uh, negative to the society if you keep on able to kill one another. As compared to uh, Plato, you don't kill because that is not one of your destiny. Yeah, you, all you need to do is you want to be able to do to uh, love someone, to be able to find beautiness. You know, if you are able to do this, obviously uh, killing is never in your mind. Yeah, in fact, killing yourself also it is not going to be in your mind. Okay, I think uh, I think that's it. Oh, Cicero, last one. Eh? So Cicero, statesman, uh, lawyer, philosopher, he says that uh, teaching that virtues is the only good, yeah, virtues, yeah. When it comes to virtues, just like Aristotle, uh, virtues is something that we want to achieve in our life. Virtues, uh, for example, being brave, yeah, uh, doing goodness. But uh, in our Malay proverbs, uh, we say that buat baik, uh, berpada-pada, buat jahat jangan sekali, right? So, virtues, uh, you are to do good, but you don't do good to the extent that uh, you do good all the way, all the time, because people will take advantage of you. Okay? Buat baik, berpada-pada, right? Buat jahat jangan sekali. You can see the proverbs uh, logic, yeah? because uh, what we want to do in life is to be able to produce good virtues. Good virtues being brave, being kind, uh, be able to like uh, help people, you know. Uh, th th those are good virtues that we, uh, that they are uh, saying. Now, with this, th these four uh, people, and uh, we will be able to uh, formulate our there's two more stoics yeah they are asking us to also think what are the virtues that is good and then uh, heraclitus uh, heraclitus uh, is uh, someone that is uh, what we call weeping philosopher eh? but uh, you don't have to understand him because uh, quite a number of uh, he doesn't have documents for him for us to understand him in proper but he is a very uh, abstract person yeah so uh, just let it let him go uh, the last slide 
Oh, okay. That uh, the two. You try to read this. Uh, I will make you understand of uh, his position if you really want to understand him. But uh, so far, that is the uh, nature of the uh, what they call it. The what was it? Uh, the classical period. Yeah, the classical period. Jurists uh, or philosophers. Uh, philosophers that come uh, to Jewish, yeah, uh, that formulates uh, into Jewish, that we can understand. So, uh, clear, inshallah? That, that is the first task. For Group G, uh, obviously you have to prepare yourself. Cik Nazim is the one that is going to ask you a lot of nasty questions, right? So, <laughs> you have to do a lot of reading uh, as compared to my group. Uh, I would stick to the syllabus. Uh, uh, so, any question, we segmentize to only uh, the coverage of the syllabus, yeah? So, done for classical period, these are, coming back to recap, uh, they are more or less trying to change the mindset of individuals, okay? If you read their, their materials, their, their books, yeah, it is more towards uh, making you realize yourself not about uh, convincing others. You don't have to convince others. Meaning, uh, if any law is to be, to be laid out uh, in front of you, you will think about the law. Rather than you akan melata, you akan kata, this, I don't like this, you know, things like that. Uh, for example, uh, uh, taxation law. If the government say that the tax is to be increased to a certain number of uh, percentage, then you feel that it is not happy, you are not happy because you are the earners of the, you have been working like crazy, yeah? you know, you don't sleep, you want to get as much money as possible and then suddenly government say, uh, excuse me, you pay uh, tax uh, on the increase from last year. You feel it is it's not fair, it is not uh, just. So you have to rationalize uh, the reason, yeah. So if you look at the uh, European countries, uh, they have high taxes, but uh, you see how they spend towards the society. But in our society, it's totally different. Maybe we tax, uh, the taxation money do not uh, reach the uh, target group, yeah? Somehow there's bocho, besar, sana, sini, you know, things like that. Uh, that is sad, yeah? But if you were to do it proper, even our zakat could settle a lot of uh, other people's problem. Uh, zakat is not, uh, to me, zakat is not to be used only for the Muslim, for the non-Muslim, irrespective of whether they are, uh, what they call it, uh, as long as they uh, meet the criteria. If they are poor, irrespective of who are poor, we as Muslim we should be. We should be able to use life that money to help them, irrespective of whether they believe in God or not. Okay, as long as it is poor. Alright, so... Uh, Try to think from now on, uh, don't let uh, anyone force you to believe in something that they believe in unless and until they are able to convince you and uh, not for them to convince you, for you to ask them questions until they are, they are able to explain clearly to you. Then only you may want to follow their ideas. Okay? So the same things. So uh, with that, any question that you want to ask before we end the session? It's too long already, <laughs> one and a half hours. I'm sorry to take up your time, but I'll try my best to complete the recording prior to the class and uh, within the class, you can read, uh, you can read, you can uh, look at the video and uh, we can come in to discuss and then uh, go off. Question guys? Are you still here? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> right. So, will okay. you share the slides? Yeah, I will share the slides. Right. Don't worry. Okay. Uh, Thank you. I, I have like 310 slides. So, don't worry about that. Uh, the materials, you will be able uh, to look for yourself. It, the main goal is for you to understand. Once you understand, there is no uh, issue there. Yeah? Because exam, they don't ask you to repeat uh, what what are the things that is being uh, stated in detail. Well, it's just a concept. 
yeah, the concept. If you are able to say, uh, to repeat the concept and understand uh, the concept by virtue of your own uh, writings, then it should be okay, right? So, uh, I will give you a problem uh, for you to go into your future if uh, uh, you can go into your future. Your future is not good uh, in terms of uh, forum, but I don't know, uh, we will try to do it in that manner. If it's not, then uh, I think of something. So if there is no question, thank you so much for coming to class. Uh, if you have any question, please write them down. Uh, pass it to the group WhatsApp, uh, personal WhatsApp, yeah, uh, uh, or the you future. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you, sir. Take care. Thank you, sir. Take care. Thank you, sir. The video thank I will update. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Good night. Thank you, sir. Thank you.